Hi, I'm Isa, aka Evil Clever Dog, and in this video I'm going to show you how I transformed both of these Fallout 76 Collector's Edition helmets. So yeah, I'm back with another Bethesda game helmet makeover video. For this video, Bethesda UK sent me two of their Fallout 76 Collector's Edition T-51B Power Armor helmets. They asked me to transform both of these helmets from their standard issue colours and into the Brotherhood of Steel reclaimed Power Armor skin from Fallout 76 to celebrate the recent launch of the game's latest content update, Steel Rain. So let's get started on the build. First, I need to mask off some parts of the helmet so they don't get paint on them. To do this, I'm using frog tape. If you saw my Doom helmet videos, you'll remember that this stuff is the true MVP of these helmet modifying videos. I start by masking off the visor. And then I mask off the large tubes that go from the front of the helmet to the back. These are already the base color they need to be, so there's no point in painting them again. When I've done one helmet, I also masked these areas off on the other. I didn't get footage of it, but I also masked off the bulb on the headlight. Next, I used Rust-Oleum Surface Primer in grey to prime both of the helmets. This is what they look like when it's dry. I love how it kind of looks like an unrendered character model. This paint job has several layers and areas to it. First, I mark where I'm going to paint the helmet silver. Following the references, I draw on these patches. I then create a mixture of black and silver for the first layer of paint. I'm only putting paint where I've marked. Later, I'll mask these areas off and paint the next color layer on top. At this point, I also paint all the other silver metallic areas, like the mouth vents, the connectors for the thin tubes, and so on. To finish the silver areas, with only silver on my brush, I dry brush over the dark silver patches I painted before to create the impression of weathered steel. I like to paint metallic silver props in this way as I feel it gives the metal look more depth to it. And then of course, I paint the second helmet. At this point, I seal the silver areas with satin sealer spray. For the next step, I use more frog tape to seal off the silver patches I painted. I tear up small scraps of the frog tape to make the edges of the patches look rough and organic. These areas are going to be where the top layer of paint has been scraped off to show the raw metal underneath. It does take a while, but it's gonna create a great effect later on. For the next layer of paint, I mix together black and burnt umber to create a dark brown. I apply this colour to the majority of the helmet, following my references. Because I masked off the silver patches, I don't need to worry about painting over them. In fact, it's kind of better to, as it will naturally make a very slight ridge between the brown layer and the metal layer underneath. One helmet down, and another to go.
When the dark brown is dry, I again seal my paint job so far, as I once again need to mask off areas with the MVP frog tape. I mask off the sections around the camouflage pattern area. This is mostly to make things easier on myself when creating clean edges on this next layer of paint. For the base of the camo section, I mix together three colours, a majority of pale olive with small amounts of olive green and burnt umber. This created a nice pale green tone with a slight brownish tint to work on top of. I also mixed burnt umber with a metallic brown to paint the copper tubing. I had masked off the areas around the side of the helmet so I could paint these sections at the same time as the green. This is a metallic section, so I did my usual dry brushing over the top of the base colour. In this case, I mixed the metallic brown with a lighter raw sienna as the metallic brown is pretty transparent. And then I dry brushed it over the tubes. I then sealed my paint job again so I could draw on the camo pattern patches. I started by painting the darkest camo patches. This is the same black and brown mix as I used on the majority of the helmet. For the mid-tone camo patches, I mixed the pale olive with parchment, which is a very, very pale greenish grey. Finally, for the lightest patches, I use the parchment paint on its own. And I sealed my paint job once again. This is the base of the paint job done, so in order to begin weathering it, I remove the frog tape everywhere except the visor and the headlight. This includes the tape covering the silver patches. It's always really satisfying to tear off the masking tape when using this method. In some harder to reach areas, I needed to use tweezers to remove the tape. I also removed the tape from the larger tubes, as I'll weather them while weathering the rest of the helmet. I took another quick look at my references and noticed that these buttons on the side of the helmet were supposed to be dark brown, so I painted them the right colour before moving on to creating some rust. In the references, this power armour suit looks suitably worn down and rusted for a post-apocalyptic suit of armour. So, I wanted to create a heavily textured rust effect for these helmets. To do this, I used texture shots from Polyprops. This is a powder you mix into paint to create a mixture with a grainy texture. I mixed it with raw sienna to create my rust mixture. Which I applied to various parts of the helmet in thick coatings. When applying rust, it's best to think about where rust would naturally form. Rust would occur in crevices and recesses where moisture would gather and cause the metal to oxidize. So I apply a lot of the mixture to the recessed parts of the helmet, the corners, where the stripped paint meets the metal underneath. Thank you. 
Now that I've added the base rust texture, it's time to weather these helmets. This is always my favourite part of a paint job. Here I have one weathered helmet and one unweathered one, so you can see how much of a difference weathering is going to make and why it's so important. So how do we go from this to that? First, I paint burnt umber into all the textured rust areas. I watered it down a lot so that it seeped into the recesses of the texture, and I could dab the colour away from the surface with a paper towel. This adds some dimension to the rust, bringing out the rough texture from the mixture I created and making it look more realistic. I also paint burnt umber into some of the deepest crevices in the helmet, like these grates above the visor, for a less textured, rusty look. Around the vents, I add really watery burnt umber to create the impression of rust dripping down from the holes. I then do a wash with a very watered down burnt umber over all the camo print areas to make it look more worn, and just kind of unify those warmer, rusty colours with the rest of the helmet. Next, I weather the dark brown areas. Since they're dark and already have a lot of rust effects on them, I wanted to add some grime in greys. I scrubbed in watered down neutral grey paint with a mop brush, and wiped away most of it with a paper towel, although I'm half wiping away and half scrubbing it into the surface to create the impression of mottled grime over the helmet. I then mixed two different brown tones into the grey, and did the same thing with this mixture to add some tonal difference to the weathering in these areas. Next, I use silver paint and a metal wire brush to make some scratches on the helmet. I already have my big patches of silver where the paint has been torn away from the surface, but the references also had some scratches on them. I quickly drag the metal brush across the helmet, literally scratching the paint into it. I can then clean up some of the scratches with cotton buds if they're too big or messy, and also add more to them with a fine detail brush. Next, I add black paint into some of the exposed metal areas. This creates more definition between these areas. I also shade the other metal areas. I was trying to be pretty sparing with the black, only using it for the darkest parts. I then do some black washing on the brown section, adding some shading back into where it meets the raised camo sections. I also add some black to the recessed areas of the tubing. And finally, I do a very light black wash over the camo areas. This was really watered down as I wanted it to be very subtle, just enough to unify the whole paint job, but not to muddy the rest of my shading.
For some more weathering on the tubes, I dry brushed that grey brown mixture from before onto it. For a final touch, I dry brush silver back onto all the silver sections, the patches, and even some of the brown and green edges. I then sealed the helmet again. Then I removed the frog tape from the headlight and the visor. At this point, I also decided to use the tweezers I had just used to remove some of the frog tape to create more scratches on the helmet. Then I moved on to painting the headlight and the visor using mixtures of raw umber, neutral gray, and buff titanium. I started with a layer of gray and buff titanium over the headlight. While I waited for that first layer to dry, I weathered the visor. I started with the same grey and buff titanium mix. Instead of painting it on, I lightly scrubbed it on with a paper towel, and then wiped most of it away, to create the impression of grungy, dirty glass. This way, the visor can also still be seen through. I then added some more weathering in the raw umber colour, using the same technique. Next, I applied another layer of paint to the headlight. I still wanted to get some of the warm tone of the original yellow colour from underneath, which is why I didn't prime it, but in my references the headlight looked a lot dimmer and dirtier. So then, I weathered the light with black and raw umber. I kept the paint watery and wiped most of it away. For a final touch, I painted over the raised ridges in the original lighter mix to highlight them. Then, I sealed the entire helmet with sealer spray one more time. And here are the finished helmets. I love how rusted and weathered these helmets look. They were a lot of fun to paint. And I loved getting to try out the texture shots to create a suitably textured post-apocalyptic rust effect. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed working on this build. If you did, please leave a like and a comment down below. And of course, I want to give a huge thank you to Bethesda UK for collaborating with me on this video. I always love working with them so much and this helmet repaint was a lot of fun. If you want to see more cosplay and crafting videos from me, then remember to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.